Mm -hmm. I've been in the area for probably um, since 1970 and have done uh, work for the city for the last 20 years as they needed it because they have very limited resources and I have a construction company so we're used to the big equipment with backhoes and doing sewer work and things like that that's what we're used to doing and so we've kind of fit in a little niche to help the city along all the time and supplied pumps and stuff to what needs to get done when uh, flooding has occurred we help the lift stations by pumping and stuff we had started this sewer project before the flood and the flood of course interrupted it caused lots of problems and one of the things we redesigned is you notice the mound of dirt that our generator and our control panel basically the original design standards was at the height as you see the concrete pits and they were installed before the flood so then we decided that after the flood we'd raise it and now the height of the building and our generator is a good two feet above the 2008 flood level. So we became immediately proactive during the flood to elevate everything we could to higher elevations. So that we feel we're extremely well protected and we changed the design criteria on our lift station. We actually, before the whole town of Palo, ran through two uh, 10 horsepower pumps. We had a ho total of 20 horsepower pump in the sewage in Palo. Now I have three 100 horsepower pumps. What that makes a difference is that like this last flood event we had where we had that nine inches of rain and, and 48 hours, I was able to keep sewage out of people's basement no matter how much infiltration when they got with rainwater and some pumps and all that because one day, one day alone, I was pumping over 960,000 gallons because I had the pump capacity to keep the sewer lines dry. So over capacity gave us a, a, quite an edge on helping to keep sewage out of the basement. So that's a good thing.